Another way to make art from your money. Make art from your money. This is hard. <laughs> hmm. What's up you guys, welcome back to my channel. Here where we talk about art, photography, marketing, entrepreneurship, and just taking back your creative freedom. So today I want to talk about five things that I normally tell other people when they ask me questions about how to go about you know selling artwork or doing their thing full time so the first thing and this is number one and anything that you do is to be consistent so one be consistent within creating and two be consistent in posting your artwork so when creating your artwork you can't expect to sell artwork without putting in work without practicing and getting better the second part of being consistent is to post all of your work on social media so make as much work as possible and then post it all the time post three four five times a day and that is how you'll get more eyes within your platform on your work and potentially new clients and take advantage of all the platforms out there all the social media platforms so I'm talking about YouTube Instagram Facebook Twitter like every single platform because people have different preferences when it comes to social media so one person might like to watch videos more than looking at a picture. Think about how you're going to be fluid when it comes to showing your artwork and showing the process. So you want to cater to a wide variety of people. Record yourself when making art and then also take pictures of the whole process as well as the finished product because then you'll be catering to people who like to watch videos over pictures and people who like to scroll through pictures rather than watch a whole video. You know, so definitely think about how you're going to implement all types of media within your artwork. Number two is to protect your mental health. So if that means taking a break from social media, then do so. If you compare yourself to other artists and it's not helping you in any type of way when you scroll through, you know, art feeds. Get off of it. Log out, don't worry about it for a week and just grind and work. Put your head down and just work, you know? So if you need to walk away from the internet and just stay away from people who you compare yourself a lot to, then do so, it's okay. Number three is think business. So when you go to an art school, they teach you all of the fundamentals of art. They teach you all the techniques when it comes to painting and drawing and all the types of mediums that you can use, but they never teach you how to sell art. Like, it does not make sense to go to a school for art, but they don't teach you how to make a living from your art. Like, you gotta go out your way and take a whole nother curriculum in business or in finances, and it's just, it ain't fair, yo. Like, the education system is, is whack. So what I figured out when I'm trying to sell artwork is that I gotta find a balance between what I want to sell and what people want to buy. There's a balance that everyone has to figure out. Sometimes the art you want to make isn't sellable or you know there's no demand for it. And that's okay because then you'll learn, okay, people like my style but they don't like the pieces that I make. Well, what if I do this? What if I do that? And then you dive deeper into discovering more of your style and you have to think about what the customer wants and also have it be something you want to do at the same time. You don't want to make something that you're not passionate about or you don't like to do. But at the same time, it caters to other people who are willing to buy your artwork. Feel me? When trying to make money from your art, you want to think about how you can serve other people rather than trying to sound salesman-y and trying to push your artwork in front of other people. So for example, if you are a painter, consider painting a mural and go to different establishments in your area and with blank walls and see if they're interested in working with you on a mural. If you're an illustrator and you don't mind working with kids, 
um, make a make yourself a portfolio and then go to different establishments that um, you know take care of kids like preschools daycares and see if you can teach an art class if you're a photographer go to like different businesses within your area and see if they need some business headshots see there are like a million different ways you can serve other people with your art it's not about you that's like that's like number one. It's not about you. <laughs> like, you can't be selfish when it comes to your art. So number four is to make it easy for potential clients and customers to buy from you. When you are trying to sell your artwork at an event or something, definitely have business cards with everything on it. Your website, your store, your social media, your phone number, your email, any and everything on there. If you have a vendor table at an event, you want to make it as easy as possible for them to buy from you. You don't want them to just look at your artwork and walk away. So when you have a business card, have everything on there. A website, your store, all your contact information, your name, some artwork on there maybe, your email, your phone number, your social media, everything. I'm talking about everything. Put it all on your business card okay have all of your information laid out and have all ways of payment printed on a sheet of paper so that and a lot of times events are loud so you don't want to have to explain something to someone and then they have to like they're like huh you have to repeat it and then it's awkward and yeah eliminate that <laughs> you need to have all of your prices printed out and have all payment options printed on a sheet of paper so I'm talking about more than just Venmo or PayPal even though you know PayPal trash <laughs> have all ways of payment even if you don't like it order the the low uh, what's it called the um the debit card and that way you don't have to worry about transferring money into your bank and then them taking a fee from you or something I'm gonna go a little more in depth with this because I don't like it when I see artists who are really freaking good but uh, they make it so that like ways to pay them is just limited have Everything, Zelle, Cash App, PayPal, Venmo, have cash, like take checks, like film me, you don't wanna ever turn down money. Take all ways of payment. Even if you gotta get that little square thing that you plug into your phone and then you can just swipe the card, do that. Because you don't wanna miss out on money, it makes you look unprofessional. Be like a bodega and have all of the ways of payment listed out, MasterCard, Visa, da 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 da. Have it all laid out, okay? <laughs> Tip number five is to talk to strangers. You know, do the opposite of what your parents taught you. Talk to strangers, you gotta network. People call it networking, I call it talking to strangers because you gotta talk to new people in order to get new clients. I know most artists are introverted and it's a little hard to talk to strangers when you know you don't really want to brag about yourself but if you talk with a stranger and you know hear them ask them questions first talk to them about what they like about your art and then that's when you jump in so what i do is i normally ask questions to the other person about you know anything going on like I, just small talk right and then i tell them that i do this that and the third i say that somewhere in the conversation but then I listen to them I hear them out and see how I can serve them with my artwork so if they have a kid I tell them that I do children's photo shoots that I do cake smashes or they say something like oh yeah so-and-so's birthday coming up my mama's birthday coming up I tell them hey listen I do portraits um if you want a photo shoot or you know I can draw a portrait of your favorite picture of her you know you gotta you gotta think about how you can help other people people with your art. People like to hear themselves talk. So a lot of the times it helps when they're you just listening to them talking and then it eases the pressure off of trying to talk about yourself a lot. Networking with artists can be very beneficial for you and the person because when you meet in person and you talk, exchange information, follow them immediately. This can help because one, if they have a style that is different than yours and someone comes to them looking to get work done, sometimes they might send that person your way because they know you can achieve the vision um, that the 
client is looking for and vice versa so that's what I do with my artist friends sometimes when I can't achieve something that the client wants I send them to someone else who has the kind of art style that they're looking for because I don't want to cheat them and sometimes it's not about the money it's about making the client satisfied another reason it can be beneficial for you and the artist to be connected is collaborating so when you collaborate with another artist and you guys post about the project that you're working on together they will tag you in their posts and you will tag them in their posts and then you have access to that person's audience that you necessarily wouldn't have and then vice versa they would have access to your audience that they wouldn't necessarily have and then you guys are more exposed have more exposure which means you'll both get new eyes on your accounts on your social media and your audience will grow so those are my five tips when talking to other people about selling art. If you think I should talk about a different topic within, you know, being a full-time artist, let me know in the comment section. Follow me on Instagram, Kyra the Creative. Check out our website, redoctoberfirm.com, and subscribe, like, all that good stuff, and I'll see you guys later.